What's up guys, it's Monty here back again today with another video. Today I'm reviewing a show that I'm low-key really late on because I'm reviewing The Magician Season 1, which I believe came out way back in like January, sometime earlier this year. I don't know what I was doing then, but I was not watching it. It was recently added to Netflix and Season 2 will be premiering on the Sci-Fi Network on January 25th. So I figured since the second season is coming out pretty soon, uh, it does make sense to talk about season one, just in case you're like me and didn't watch when it was airing and you binged it all in a day on Netflix because there's only 13 episodes. So when I originally recorded this, I tried to make it short and sweet, but I think that I'm just gonna be myself and if I ramble on, I ramble on. To get to uh, just something short, if you only have a little bit of time and you just wanna hear my condensed thoughts, I would recommend watching The Magicians. I do think that it is worthy to binge on Netflix. Um, it is, in my opinion, a little slow to get into because The Magicians is a book series uh, by Lev Grossman, I believe. And while I haven't read them, I have been aware of them. So when I, I understood like the basic, basic, basic premise of the show. And so it took me a while to get used to how sci-fi was adapting it because it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't bad. I do think that of the three shows, well, the two shows, really, Once Upon a Time and Star that I've talked about on my channel so far, uh, The Magicians has the best writing. I think that it just, maybe because it's not on a network, you know, it's, you know, it's on a cable channel that you have to pay for and stuff, that it, maybe that's why the writing is better. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it compares to the book series, but the writing on The Magicians is better. I feel that the acting is pretty solid. There's some moments where I'm just like, we can tone it down here. But of the characters that I cared about, the acting was always good. And I do think that it does some interesting things. I do think The Magicians is interesting in how it treats the characters and how characters respond to certain things. Just in general, I find that The Magicians is a pretty... I like it, and I would recommend it. So if you haven't already checked it out, make sure that if you have Netflix, like, why not? Like, you already... Like, why, it's worth an episode. I do think that the first episode is probably one of the strongest ones of the entire first season. So give it a couple, and if you don't like it, then that's okay, too. So now we're going to move on. And from here on out, there will be spoilers probably, so if you haven't already watched and you don't want to be spoiled, now is the perfect time to leave. And if you're still sticking around, thank you. So let's get started. I'm going to start off with the things that I really didn't like about the show, and I'm going to get to the things that I did like about the show, and then we're just going to end it, because you already know that I recommend it. So the first thing I didn't like was in the season finale when Julia was raped. And I have to say, I'm getting really tired of watching people get raped on TV. Like, it's just like... W and what made it worse is, I feel that she was only raped so they could have the plot twist at the end where she had the knife or the little dagger, whatever you want to refer to it as, the little moon blade to the beast's neck and was like, you're going to teach me. Like... So and then they left or whatever, like they vanished. Like that was, it was only to facilitate that because if it was dress, wow, dress. If it was just to show how traumatizing that event was, uh, she literally just watched like six people get killed. She watched Katie's mom earlier in the season get killed. Like there was no real reason that she had to be raped other than to like allow her to grab the blade because she wasn't, already a master magician and you know what if you really wanted her to hold on to that blade and not need something else i feel that just make her the master magician like literally that's it like if because jane chatwin's whole plan for keeping her from break bills was so that she would be out in the cold and that she would have to develop magic on her own so if that was her plan then in my mind it makes more sense for her to just already to have become the master magician like that makes more sense. Nobody needed to be raped. You could still have her be traumatized from the goddess killing everybody. Like... And what makes no sense to me is not only did he kill literally everyone else in there except for Katie, who apparently got away. 
why would he just rape her and then just leave her there? Like, why wouldn't he rape her and then kill her? Like, I mean, that's not any better. Like, I'm not advocating, like, oh, if you rape someone, you should kill them. Like, that's not what I'm trying to say at all. But it's like, he literally, his only motivation in that scene was to kill everybody else. But then Julia just lives. And I'm only upset because I liked Julia as a character. Like, in the pilot, when she didn't get into break bills, I was devastated with her. And then when she was doing all those, like, drug addict behaviors later on throughout the series season, and when she was, like, mastering the magic, I was right there with her rooting for her because I liked Julia. And so when she was sat there in that finale and is raped for no fucking reason when they could have just written her to be the master magician, like, yeah, it would have made no sense. But you know what? The show already doesn't make any sense because I was under the impression I was going to watch a nice little show about a magical university and they were going to fight some battles. Like... That's what I thought was going to happen. And I got no magical education. Like, literally, the few scenes that we got in the classroom, one of them was somebody getting killed. One of them was Alice making her little unicorn thing. And then the other was when they had the actress who played the blue fairy talking, and they had to, like, team up and stuff. Like, they show exams and trials and tests and things, but they never really explain to you how the magic system works. So... Like, the whole time I'm sitting there, like, one, how are there even head witches? Like, I understand that they said that, like, some people have magic, but they can't ever, like, expand it onto anything. But it's like, these head witches seem to, like, be expanding their repertoire. So I don't understand the, the, the logic behind not accepting all these people into break bills. I didn't understand the logic of the magic system at all, because I didn't understand the finger motions. Like, I'm just in here, like, I mean, I guess that's interesting. Like, a interesting mechanism to channel your magic. But it was never explained to me why that is or how that is. So I didn't like that. And I did, like, there was a certain things that I felt that the book has to explain better. Like, in the book, you have time, I guess, to explain the magic system in a way that you don't have time in the TV show to do. But I would have appreciated that uh, a little bit more if they had done that. So I didn't appreciate that. And I didn't like, I didn't like the fact that uh, the author of the... I didn't like Fillory. Fillory as a name bothers me. Like, every time they were talking about the Fillory books or going to Fillory or Fillory has to be real or whatever. Oh, Fillory is real when it was, like, later on revealed. That whole thing bothered me only because I'm petty and I thought the name Fillory sounded fake as fuck and, like, I was very skeptical that the place existed because it just sounded so fake and then even when they got there i felt that fillery in itself was like this weird like the, the whole concept of it from the author man to the three children like it just i don't like i feel like it was supposed to like invoke narnia-esque feels like because let's be real here like fillery is fucking narnia like <laughs> From the, the getting there randomly, to the children, to the... Like, it was weird. Like, and then to have the author man molesting Martin, that bothered me. I don't like it, because I just... I don't like molestation plot lines, and I don't like that the molested child grew up to be the villain, and I, I just... I didn't like it. I thought that that part of it was lazy writing, like... No... No, not here for it. Not never here for that. Never, never here for that. So, wasn't a fan of those things. Moving on to the things that I did like. Uh, first and foremost is Elliot. Elliot, by far and away, is one of my favorite characters on this show. Like, him and his relationship with Margot gave me major Mark and Amanda vibes from Ugly Betty that I just could not help but to be in love. Like, they were probably what really made those first couple of episodes bearable. Like, their whole dynamic is great, and it's really what kept me watching, because I didn't really know if I wanted to watch it, because I was very iffy on the whole thing. I didn't know if I really liked it or if I was just trying to like it, because I knew that other people did. And again, I was just trying to get on that bandwagon type thing. But no, I do like the show, and Elliot and Margot are two of my favorite characters. I also really like Alice, and it, but it bothered me that we had in like things like episode three or so i don't know is that the beginning of the season when alice was trying to bring back her brother and stuff 
that whole situation bothered me because it didn't service the overall plot it didn't service any underlying thing like it was just there to be there i feel and i think that they could have used that time better but i don't write for tv what do i know but i do think that, that could have been better handled to make it tie in maybe or i don't know i just I wanted something more done there, and it also bothered me that even though in, like, the final episode, uh, Quentin, who I, I hate it, I hate Quentin so much, I think he's so boring, but it bothered me there that he wanted to tell Alice that she was the chosen one, and, you know, all throughout the first season, they're talking about how Alice, you know, her secret in the trial was, you know, she always holds back so people will, like, befriend her and stuff. But at that point in the show, she had a group of friends. Like, Quentin had already fallen head over heels for her. She had Elliot and Margot, even though if they weren't, like, close, close, like, they were still there. They She had Quentin at that point still, and Katie. And even though Quentin and Katie were, like, reluctant people who didn't really want to be there for her, like, they were still, like, it was obvious that they were, like, a foursome. And then even when Katie left, like, Penny was still there. So it bothered me that, like, she would be like, oh, people are going to be alienated from me even more. Like, eh, I can't really be my true self. Because a male character would not have that issue. Like, a male character would not have had that dilemma. And I think that, I, I mean, I guess that was kind of her point. But at the same time, it bothered me that, like, oh, we're ending the season now. You are the chosen one, Alice, not me. So I just feel like I would have much preferred if she would have just, like, used her full magic the entire time. Because Quentin was over here being stupid and being annoying and didn't like him at all. And I liked Alice and I want to see her succeed. Jules, I really liked her. I feel that she got majorly fucked over. Um, it bothers me when I think about it, so I'm just gonna say I liked her. Move on. I liked Penny. Penny, I thought, was a great character. Um, it bothered me a little bit that, like, there was only two people of color on this show. Uh, Penny and the Dean. And the Dean is really just kind of there. I wouldn't really say he does anything of any consequence like he reveals some stuff but he's not really important and then they have penny and they did like all kinds of weird like yoga e meditation stuff because he's a psychic and oh to control your psychicness you have to like meditate and do yoga and i was like i don't know if this is offensive or not um i was happy when penny called out quentin for being a racist motherfucker when they were in the dreamland a lot of i thought that episode was also a waste of time because it really bothers me when you have sci-fi shows uh, or like a fantasy show and they put people in a psychiatric ward because yes mental illness is a real thing and it's a, you know something that needs to be addressed but it really just rubs me the wrong way when your show is not about mental illness and your character just thinks they have it and they're just like i, I didn't like it i don't i i could be wrong for it let me know in the comments below but it just it just rubs me the wrong way I feel like it diminishes mental illness in some fashion, but what do I know? I just a person who watches too much television. But I did like Penny. And overall, I liked the writing on the show. Even if I didn't like all the characters, I thought they were all written well. Um, I do think that, you know, Jules got fucked over and Alice didn't get to shine where she should have shown. But overall, I felt that the plot was, it was handled well, even if it was kind of messy in the beginning. Of, because I feel that they were trying to focus on the school and their education, but then they were like, we just can't do that in 13 episodes. And then when they stopped trying to do that, things got better. Um, Jules' storyline that was running parallel, I feel like that's kind of something that's hard to do, to have two competing storylines. I could, I think you could argue that Jules and Quentin are supposed to be the main character of this show because they both get storylines in you know, really important moments. Um, so, I mean, overall it is an ensemble, but Jules and Quentin by far and away get the more, like, focus, I guess you would say. And I would recommend it, so if you haven't already, be sure to check out The Magicians at some point, even if you're just vaguely interested. Uh, now that I've seen the show, I will be doing episodic reviews when it comes back on January 25th, and I will be looking into reading the books, because they were already on my radar, but now that I've seen the show and I have all these questions, I have to know if they're answered in the source material. So until